for any one of us to say whether this will actually help to solve the, uh, the situation in the short term or in the long term. I'm just hoping that the humanitarian dimension of this uh, situation needs to be addressed and resolved as quickly as possible. There are lives that are being lost there. There, are, there is, there is a, a humanitarian crisis which we have been witnessing in these past uh, weeks. And it, it needs to be resolved in the best interest of everybody. This is not getting anywhere. It is not benefiting anyone at all. And Malta appeals to Gaddafi and to the regime to stop this immediately uh, and to stop the loss of life. We need to get the region settled and we need to give the people on the ground what they deserve. They are fighting for their rights. They want a, ch a change. And we need to help uh, the Libyan people to achieve their ambitions and their aspirations, like anyone else who lives in a free world. And let's turn to Jonathan here, who we introduced earlier. Um, Jonathan, do you think that uh, countries like Italy and Malta, but all the other countries that are nearer to Libya than the ones that are far away, um, should they be refusing entry, do you think? Is that a legitimate thing to do, or should they be cooperating more? Oh, I think that it's really important that there's full cooperation to turn a boat back with refugees who well may have a well-founded fear of persecution without checking first is a clear contravention of the 1951 Refugee Convention. Now, the internationally signed convention across the world of how we seek to protect refugees. So I think it's so important to see who is coming. But I think a vital point is that Europe can't look to the states of Malta, Italy, Greece to take all the responsibility. You know, Europe talks of solidarity. There has to be solidarity across all the member states. After the Kosovo crisis, there was a temporary protection directive, sharing responsibility, allowing access. The European Union needs to dust that down and share responsibility. This is a defining moment. The people of North Africa are speaking, but Europe needs to act together in solidarity and not just look for the southern European states right. to take so all of the responsibility. Point, not just uh, Malta um, and not just Italy and not just Greece, but it has to be a Europe-wide I think uh, it's collaboration. fundamentally important. In Libya, we know from the United Nations, there are 8,000 registered refugees, 3,000 asylum seekers already in Libya. We look for the European Union to look at resettlement, airlifting those refugees out of very dangerous situations into Europe. And at the moment, not one single member state has offered one single place for resettled refugees. This is a humanitarian crisis, as the Prime Minister rightly says. We see them the no-fly zone. We now need refugees action to save those people now. Prime Minister, um, how many people from Libya do you think will be looking for a home in Europe? That is very difficult to, to calculate or be specific about. I mean, the figures we know is that about a quarter of a million moved out of Libya into the Tunisian or Egyptian borders during the uh, uh, height of the, of the crisis. Um, and that, that, that number might include Libyans and might include people from other nationalities yeah. who are living in Libya. So um, it is difficult for us to, to calculate what the precise number will be. What we are certain about is that uh, if the situation on the ground continues to get um, more difficult with, 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 uh, with uh, loss of life and, and more injuries and with the general situation getting worse, then there will be a flight of people which will uh, definitely um, not only move into the Tunisian and Egyptian borders, but will continue to start to cross uh, the Mediterranean. Now, we have to look also at what has been happening in Italy and in Lampedusa, with people, Tunisians, crossing from Tunisia onto Lampedusa. So we're actually facing an unstable situation in Tunisia, the situation in Libya, and also what's happening in Egypt. This, if you add all this to what we've been living through in the past years now, Malta has been facing the flow of immigration coming from the Horn of Africa mainly, Somalia, Eritreans, people who, who never really wanted to come to Malta, but who ended up on our island by chance because we, we saved their lives, because they were in a boat that was about to drown, because they asked for our help and we went out to, to, to help them. And all through these years, we've been asking for support from the European Union and from the international community. What would you say, looking at the situation, you would like them to do practically to help? 
What, what, what can these other countries, they see the problems that face Malta and Italy, sure. what, what can they actually, apart from saying we'd like to help, yeah. how would they help? We need to share responsibility. I made reference to the Temporary Protection Directive. That needs to be re-enacted. Sharing responsibility. And Europe needs to find a way that it's safe for refugees to come to Europe. And I have to say, things like the Italian government pushing refugees back to Libya before this crisis erupted. Libya had never signed the 51 Refugee Convention. You know, transferring the problem, the challenge, back to North Africa is not the problem. Europe needs to have a strategic, coordinated approach. The European Union needs to act in solidarity, doing it together. Doing it together. Uh, Prime Minister, that's very much what you were saying, in slightly different words, but saying the same thing as Jonathan there. Acting together. Europe has got to act together, um, and you've got to... Hope that when you go back to your office, the, the phones will be ringing with prime ministers of every country in Europe ringing up and volunteering for help. Do you see this crisis uh, and the refugee crisis as it affects Malta? Do you see this situation going on, prime minister, for some time or can there be a solution more quickly? No, I, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not uh, that optimistic, although I would love to be. Uh, what I can say is I think there is heightened awareness. I think the European Union realizes that there is a human tragedy which continues to grow and the danger that it will really grow to uh, enormous proportions. In our last summit, which we had uh, last week, uh, the summit conclusions made it very clear that we need to take the necessary steps to prepare ourselves for this and that support needs to be given to those countries that find themselves in difficult situations like Malta. We thank you very much for joining us and you Jonathan too of course and uh, thank you for the very good points you've both been making. Thank you very much.